What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. This is From the Stands, the Cool Pick Show, live from Whippy, Ontario. My name is Ryan. I am, of course, your host for the day. Um, today, we have a very special guest. Uh, Rob from Stereos will be joining us for a live interview uh, and just a general talk about fitness, uh, music, and everything else that is currently happening. As soon as we get uh, Rob joined in on the channel today, we will get things going and have him um, join and set up. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Obviously, this is a crazy time right now with the whole COVID-19 pandemic, uh, but I hope that you are safe, uh, you are healthy, your families are safe and healthy, and everyone is doing well. So let's just see if we can get him on. Let's see who's joined the chat so far. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Jordan Dixon. Hello, Sean. Hope everybody is doing well on this Monday afternoon. I'm really excited to uh, be starting this podcast back up. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I have my own radio show at Durham College, and I'm excited to have this launched up and ready to go. So let's add Robbie. What's Robbie, up, guys? What's up? How are you? Good, man. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Am I Perfect. good on your end? Yeah, you're good. I saw some people. I saw the pros doing this with headphones, so I thought I'd put some headphones in. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that pro. I don't have that major setup, but I was like, yeah, I'll skip the uh, headphones for today, and hopefully everything looks good. So how's things? Yeah, man. How's life? Good. It's good, man. I mean, strange times right now. Uh, I've been in my house for way too long. I get released for an hour a day to go host a live workout from our gym, and that's literally, yeah, like, truthfully, I'm working my way through the Twilight series right now, and that's sad, man. Oh my God. That's sad. I know. I, know. I need sports, man. Tell me about it. I'm usually a guy that's like out and going. Like I play baseball, ba basketball, hockey, everything. And so, but like just to be told, like, hey, you have to stay in your house. I am losing. I know, life. man. I, I know. It's boy. weird. It's weird times. I'm to the level of boredom where I've started to create a puzzle and I'm, I hate puzzles. So <laughs> <laughs> I tried to sell my fiance on a puzzle over Christmas and we got like six pieces done and it just sat there, but maybe we'll come back out here. Oh, geez. Um, cool. Well, sorry. Let me just make sure that everyone can see the feed. Cause I've, I'm getting some, uh, Instagram just to see, I guess maybe some people can't see it, but we'll, we'll work no with that right now. So, um, so I just want to start off for the, the, for the few fans that don't know, uh, may know who you are. I just wanted you to introduce yourself and, uh, kind of get things rolling that way. Sure. So my name is Rob Shalafu, uh, AKA Robbie C back in the day. Um, one of the founding members and guitar player, one of the guitar players of the band Stereos. And I also, am a strength and conditioning coach in the city of champions, Edmonton, Alberta, where I work with youth football, youth hockey, and for the company, anytime fitness. That's awesome. That's great, man. I mean, last time I saw you and the boys perform was at the rec room in Toronto last May. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, was, it, that was a wild time. That was so cool to see you guys back in action. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was crazy, man. And we kind of knew it was coming up. We had a feeling that, you know, it was the 10-year anniversary of the album dropping, and, or sorry, of Summer Girl dropping, and it started as a conversation kind of between me, Pat, and Dan, and then Miles and Aaron, and we were like, you know what, if anything, with the way that Stereo's ended, at least we can do this and this on our own, own terms, you know, we can have a nice little send-off, and anyone that I had met previous, or sorry, post-Stereo's, like, a lot, I train a lot of young hockey kids and stuff, they just don't believe me that we were a big deal back in the day. So it was kind of nice to have a way to like show them, Hey, like stereos used to be cool, but you know what? We had so much fun playing it and it sold out in Toronto and it sold out again in Edmonton. And it was just unreal to have that much response. People still screaming the words. So we thought this, this isn't over. And they just fired us right back up. And now we have sunset gold kicking out there. Yeah. And we're going to get to that actually in a few minutes, but I wanted to start off by um, asking like getting into music, how did you first get involved with the band Stereos and like, how did you guys all meet? Oh man, it's, it's actually such a crazy story. So um, even Aaron, yeah, we're all originally from Edmonton. So back in about 2003, 
I was still in high school, essentially. Um, I met Miles on a local kind of punk rock, like scene kid, um, like message board in Edmonton. And I was in a kind of screaming band and obviously that did nothing and it was terrible. So we ended up, uh, that band fizzled out and Miles joined this band that Dan was in and it was called Calico Drive and it was kind of like your classic, like emo kind of thing. And, but they were, they had touring capabilities. So they were able to go to the US when all of us were just playing little hall shows here. So I played with them actually left grade 12 to go on tour with them, went across the U.S. a couple times, playing literally to sometimes people just in a Mexican burrito shop in New Mexico uh, to people trying to have a dinner and were screaming in their face. So had the time of my life, got to see the U.S. before I turned 18. It was an awesome time, but the music was terrible. Now, what happened was Dan and Miles ended up kicking me out of that band, and I was Pissed. I was so <laughs> upset. I was like, oh my God. And to be honest, I probably deserved it. I had no idea what I was doing. So I spent about a year doing absolutely nothing and just hanging on White Ave at Edmonton, which is kind of where all the, it's like our one little street we have here <laughs> to go out for the bars are at, kind of the oh. university era, doing nothing with my life. And I was working at a job where you change oils on cars and it wasn't that fun for me. So I kind of knew of Pat from the local Edmonton music scene, and he was working at a store called Q on White Ave, and I kind of wanted to get back into that, and I was starting to get want to get back into music. So he actually hired me there, and he, <laughs> we were the two employees. We just talked about being in this band all day, so we kind of had this little other idea for a screamo band. So now I was mad at Miles and Dan and had met Pat, Still kind of had a pretty good relationship with Dan, though, and that band didn't work out. So then we scrapped the whole thing, decided that, you know what, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like the, the piece that knows everyone individually and kind of all brought us together. So me, Dan, and Pat started the band Stand By Me, and we decided we were going to take a year to just write songs in the basement and just practice, on, practice, practice, practice to get good songs together and then try to actually make a run of it. And us doing that is what turned into stereos. So I kind of knew everyone I know. And there's so much more I'm forgetting too. We all lived in this little house that's been demolished in Edmonton because it was so disgusting. But Summer Girl came out of that, which is awesome. So if you picture the movie The Hangover and that scene where Zach Galifianakis is in the casino with all the numbers going around, yeah. that's right now trying to put it all together oh it's and you know what the entire time this was happening to you i remember we're at like 06 now the oilers were in the stanley cup finals against carolina so we were like half of our songs original names we just didn't think of the names they'd have to deal with whatever the oilers were doing so <laughs> that summer of 06 i always think of such a crucial time for us really putting everything together just hanging out it was awesome that's, awesome. that's so cool man because like it's it's really neat to see all the intertwine and how bands really get together and start to create music. Um, obviously, as part of that, you've uh, done a lot of tours. Like you said, you've come to Toronto. Uh, I know that you guys performed um, at the Much Music Video Awards back yeah. in the day. Um, and you've done a bunch of touring since, uh, or like during that time, and then even since then. Um, what's been your most favorite experience touring so far? Oh, man. Like, I know. It, it, I, I, would, <laughs> I, could, I could minimize that to like a top 20 if I had to. But honestly, um, I don't know. I think a lot of us, we love, like Canada is obviously our favorite place. We're all Canadian and we're so proud to be Canadian. But it was really cool to start getting stereos to the U.S. Uh, up here, obviously, we had the reality show and there was kind of like a boy band vibe. And, you know, we were kind of a big deal up here. But down there, we, they didn't really know what to think of us. <laughs> we had a little bit of radio play, not what they had in Canada, but we were kind of like, like a little like, it was a little bit louder live and it just had a kind of a different vibe down there. So we had an American tour actually with Jeffree Star, who's like so famous now. And it was awesome and because they didn't really know we were able to like open the tour with Summer Girl, which no- normally we'd play last. And it just, it was a great time. And we saw a lot of like American venues that we had kind of grown up watching bands we like playing. Um, but let me think of one, you know, there's a couple, you know, when we were filming the video for uh, Throw Your Hands Up, we had just left Edmonton after singing the anthem at an Oilers game, which was huge for the sports guys in the band, like Pat and me. And then we were in Miami filming the video the next day for Throw Your Hands Up and got to go to Monday Night Football, uh, Miami Dolphins versus Colts. So I always, because we're such big sports guys, I really liked, you know, having an off day and seeing just Minnesota Twins versus Boston Red Sox or something like that. So really there's just absolute shenanigans every day on tour and i miss that 
so, so much. Um, depending to, ooh, someone just complimented my mustache. Thanks. <laughs> depending <laughs> on the age group of most of these people, <laughs> we decide what stories I would really share here. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, one, actually, one viewer uh, sent in a question of how many tattoos do you have? Oh, man, great question. Uh, we get that question a lot. Uh, because so much of it is a piece, right? It's more about kind of how many hours we put into it. So I really don't know how many numbers of tattoos I have, but I started when I was 17 and I stopped at about 26. Uh, oh. But two full arms, legs, chest, and, you know, Pat and Dan are equally as heavily tattooed, if not more as well. So we stopped counting at a certain point and it's more by hours, but I think it's about time to get fired up again too. Yeah, I get a couple new uh, things on there. Yeah, exactly, man. Um, cool. Now, obviously, uh, everyone in their industries will have challenges that they face. What would be one of the biggest challenges that you had um, when it came to the band, whether it was like through touring or getting started up or anything like that? Yeah. And do you mean more on a sense of like what it was like to build the band there or just personal challenges that I had? Um, I think building a band like you, you cool. touched okay. on dates weren't as uh, kind of ventured into into scenarios. Yeah. And wondered what it was like to get over that hump. Yeah, so you know, the big thing is, the problem I think we did, and I think what a lot of people do is, the local scene is just an absolutely incredible thing. And you know, I, I grew up in that scene and I still respect those bands so, so much, but a lot of people, they set their goals on just playing those shows, right? And we did that for years and years and years. And what really separated us is, and I'll be honest, it was really Dan and Pat that pushed me through this because I was such a local scene guy. They said, why, why are we looking up to this, this, and this? We should be trying to get after the fallout boys, the green days. And we started thinking like, you know what? It isn't unrealistic to hit that massive market. And that's so exactly what we wanted to do. You know, even though we had grown up playing hall shows, like 100 people max, and that would have been an amazing day. We just started to look at like the giant, Who's out there? Who's doing it? Is it Katy Perry? Like, what are they doing different? You know, so we took a lot of flack for that in the start. Um, but I really, really, when I look back onto it now, I really, I'm glad that we did that uh, because I think that really set us up. And then we just, after years of having bands not work, we found the right combination of guys that cared about it as much as I did. And we we're willing to put absolutely everything in. So like there's 2006 to 2008 is just nothing but band work for us. And it, you know what, we got, it paid off for us. And I, I, I wouldn't change anything with that. That's awesome. And talking about band work, and you, you actually touched on Sunset Gold. So after an eight-year hiatus, you guys released Sunset Gold uh, just over a month ago on February 28th when it dropped. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and what it meant to put out the work for that song and what it meant to release it? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, the first time I ever heard Summer Girl on the radio was a pretty cool thing, but I think this is as close to that. for Just for not having music out for eight years there, after kind of the hype of the summer and us kind of being back and announcing we're back, Pat had been writing some pretty incre incredible songs that we had been seeing. And when Summer Girl, when we first, or sorry, when we heard, first heard uh, Sunset Gold, S-G for a reason, um, I, I, we just knew. I was like, this is a banger. It's going to be so good. So we ended up working with a guy in Edmonton who we had worked with before, Randor, incredible. I just, so there was some history there. He'd helped us with Stand By Me. And as we saw it coming together, we just saw the vision get realized. And it was just kind of that old dynamic of what we had with, you know, the tattooed guys playing rock music with some R&B vibes over top. Now it's that cool DJ dance drops. And I've always loved that stuff. And um, I just, I couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. And, you know, I thought maybe here's something for the old Stereos fans to just enjoy. But instantly getting radio play has just been so wonderful. And it is just, I couldn't be happier with the response. I mean, I wish we hadn't had dropped it right before this all happened here. But um, at the same time, it's people are sitting home getting just bombarded by it with on the radio. And Edmonton, at least, anyway. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, I've heard it uh, a few times here in, like, Toronto and Whippy. Oh, really? You've heard it out there? Oh, man, that's the first time I've heard that. Not, not cool. too often, but I have heard yeah. it a few times. So. Sweet. The boys it's still got it. Exactly, so. Awesome, um, man. Thanks so much. Now, talking about albums and musicians, uh, we actually had another uh, question come in, and I'm going to combine the two. So if you had to pick one album to listen to from now until the end of the current oh, coronavirus state, so that could be weeks or it could be months, what would yeah. that be? And who would be someone that you looked up to growing up like in your music career? Oh, man, what an awesome question. I could talk about that for an hour if I had to. <laughs> so um, music saved me when I had a tumultuous childhood and is saving me right now during this quarantine kind of thing we got going here. I 
Oh, the guys are going to hate me for this, but right now it's honestly Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, and the Infinite Sadness. It's a double CD, came out when I was like eight years old, and it's just so nostalgic for me. And a lot of people can't handle Billy Corgan singing, but I love it. And you got, you got a little bit of piano in there, then you get some heavy rock songs. And for me, it's just good. I would say that's probably what my Deserted on a Lonely Island record is. I just love it. And everybody hates it, too. Fair. Why, why do any of the guys hate it? Uh, you know what? Those poor guys have just had to deal with me driving the van and absolutely bombarding them <laughs> with either, like, 1990s Euro dance music or, like, screaming Billy Corgan. So there's, some, there's definitely some stuff I'm not allowed to play anymore in there. Isn't it supposed to be that the passenger has the uh, DJ rights, though? Yeah, but when you live and work with, like, your best friends for, like, five years, <laughs> all those little rules start, start to disappear. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fair. Um, Absolutely. So, talking outside of music, um, as you mentioned, you're a fitness director and a strength coach. What made yeah. you want to get into fitness and that whole realm of things? Yeah, so I grew up playing hockey my whole life. Um, I was playing pretty serious hockey, and I'll be honest with you, when I played hockey, I didn't really enjoy it. I just happened to be you know a bigger guy and was a little bit more athletic and got to play in some higher tiers but I was obsessed with music and even though that didn't work out for me uh I always kind of knew that music would but I I remember I kind of truthfully I got a little carried away with um how unhealthy you can be in a band right because you got no responsibilities right so you know alcohol shows up all that kind of stuff and one night I just kind of got sick of it um there was some internal stuff going on I hadn't dealt with and I just wasn't feeling good I was sick of drinking that kind of thing so uh, Dan, who had been working out, and there was a little divide of, like, the workout guys and the non-workout guys, and me and Pat were just being stubborn, and we ended up getting a nice little place in Mississauga there, uh, right by Square One. We had a cool little apartment that had a home gym, so we said, and that's going to be coming up on 10 years now, you know what, let's start going for runs, feeling good, and I, it just did something for me that it just, any, like, built-up anger or rage I had inside me just instantly dealt with. I loved the way it felt. And it was just awesome. It was such a good time. I definitely think I owe it to Dan, as I see he just signed on here. Get us, to get hey, us Dan, in... special shout out. <laughs> to get us into using workout stuff, right? And I just, I never looked back and I just became absolutely obsessed with it. And I was down in California at the time and I was working at a gym where the guy was a sports guy and a music guy as well. And it just, it, it just really, really helped. And then when I came, when we ended stereos or put it on hiatus, when I came back to Edmonton, realizing I had no idea what I was going to do, it was the next best thing. And um, I was just super, it, it's been incredible for me. I'm almost at 10 years of doing it now, running three gyms, part owner in them, and getting to work with youth athletes make me, makes me feel as good as uh, doing stereo stuff. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. speaking of stereos, uh, Dan, since you're on and you're watching, <laughs> if you want to shoot me an Instagram request to get on this video, we'd love to have you join as well. Um, Talking about a little bit more about fitness for obviously it's a crazy time right now with everyone yeah. being sequestered into their homes and the um, government saying like stay at home as long as you can and things like that. Yeah. Um, what, what tips would you provide to people that want to start working out, out at home? Obviously, a lot of people may not have the equipment needed to work yeah. at home like they would in the gym, but what would you, uh, um, w w how would you direct them in that sense? Totally. So um, this has been the only thing keeping me from going crazy. And I encourage anyone who's any of your followers as well, if they want to shoot me a message on Instagram, I'm giving out any free bodyweight programs that can be done at home. Now, the biggest thing, and I'll just take a step back here is making sure you're getting on a routine. The first thing we want to do in these kind of situations is you want to sleep in all day, that kind of stuff. And you know, if you need your extra rest, that's a great thing. But getting on a routine has been a huge, huge thing. And my fiance and I, what we do is we wake up about 7 a.m. It's email time. It's breakfast time. We plan the workout for the day and then deliver the workout on Facebook Live on Anytime Fitness Old Strathcona. Uh, all body weight stuff. But here's the thing. A lot of people think you need all that equipment. And it's, it's more of a mental thing than not. You can do just as much with just body weight. So I encourage you all to just search body weight exercises. Get some upper body stuff, get some lower body stuff in there, get some cardio, jogging on the spot, fake skipping, getting those endorphins to pump up through the day. What that's going to do is just going to make you feel better. You're going to feel better. You're going to be able to do problem solving better, all that kind of stuff. Squats, you can do those anywhere. We have, if you need some weights, something as simple as uh, bicep curls, Put, take a grocery bag, throw some cans in there. Anything is a weight if you really want it. But certain, there's some great fitness people out there that are providing free workouts. They're not trying to capitalize off this at all. And 
Usher, that guy is jacked and he uses only body weight. So many options. Please reach out to me. That's awesome. So yeah, people watching, please do that. Um, I know I've been trying to get into some home workouts myself. And I just like went on Google and typed in different home workouts. Um, totally. Equipment. And, <laughs> uh, I actually, uh, as I mentioned, I was um, to you on text, I sent or I tuned into what you guys were doing earlier today and it looked really good. And it was something that yeah. was so easy that anyone could do from their home. Yeah. Um, and and unfortunately, I got my ass kicked today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are your legs feeling after that one? Oh, it was brutal, man. Like I let her teach today and I had to do the workout. And I was, oh. I tell you, I was like, I got to capitalize on these endorphins before we do this interview because I was fading, man. <laughs> Jeez. Um, awesome, man. Well, is there anything else that you want to chat about, bring up? Um, obviously, uh, this is great to have you on. Um, I'm, it's been way too long since we've obviously chatted. So I've seen each Absolutely, other. Absolutely, man. It's hard since you guys are all in Edmonton, but... I might have to make a drive or fly up there soon, but uh, oh, City of Champions, come see Connor McDavid, man. <laughs> yeah, I, <I'll>, we, <laughs> we have awesome matches. All right, we're all right. So. I see. Why would you even put those two into the same conversation? That's ridiculous. <laughs> you got. I mean, I could. We could talk with it. It feels good to talk sports right now. Um, yeah. I I get it. I think Matthew Matthew's personality is incredible. I do like the guy, um, but come on, there's no comparison there, man. Yeah, it, it, you know what's funny is me and my buddies actually were at the Oshawa Generals 2015 Memorial Cup game when McDavid awesome. was there. Oh, with um, Erie. Playing. Yeah, so yeah. we got to see him live, which was really, really cool too. Yeah, that's awesome. He just, I, I will, he, he lives in the same neighborhood as me down here in Edmonton. And I'm just, I'm, cra I'm crazy about the guy. I drive by his house every day and stuff. It's awesome. Um, awesome. But yeah. If, if you don't mind, my big thing now is I really like talking about mental health. Um, so I'll just yeah, give a quick blurb about that. You know, biggest thing, uh, as someone who suff suffers from mental health their own, you know, I have anxiety and depression issues. Um, this can be a really tough time for that. And just going back to that routine, get on a routine, tr learn a new language. This is a cool kind of opportunity we have. It's unfortunate what's happening out there, but you have some time to really focus on yourself. And that's something that's really taken away from us and how crazy the North American work weeks can kind of be. So you know what, something I'm doing, I'm trying to read as much as possible. I'm trying to fin look, finish. I just started a psychology degree. Um, just really trying to not overwhelm myself with negative, all the negative news, but still staying informed, still staying responsible. Um, I like horror movies and all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to watch some more uplifting stuff. I'm taking this opportunity to really, you know, talk to family members more, uh, even though it's all through the phone. And I find that I actually, as strange as time is, I've been able to almost make more connect, like kind of personal connections with people having the time to finally do it. So stay safe out there. Keep talking to each other and spread love. That's my advice. That, that's a great way. That's a great segment, man. Cause like, honestly, you're a hundred percent right. I know I've been doing virtual video game nights, like three, four yeah, times a week with friends. Cause uh, it's just, it's, it can definitely drain on you a lot. So yeah, and we're in this together, right? For for once, the first time that my thirty three years of being alive, the entire world is on the same team right now, and I think that's kind of a that's kind of a cool thing. So I hope we get to continue some of this kind of just everyone feeling good together and all of us working for the same goal after this all ends. For sure, man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat today. Um, it was a pleasure seeing you again, chatting with you again. Um, and you never know, maybe we'll see you uh, absolutely live on stage one day soon. All right, man. Can't wait. Had a great time, buddy. Have a good day. All right, man. Take care. See you later. All right, guys. So that was Robbie from the from the band Stereos. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in today. Um, again, this is from the stands, the Cool Pick Show. We are back, um, and we will be hopefully having some more interviews with more people. Uh, throughout the coming weeks and thank you for joining if you do have any questions uh, for Rob or for myself please let me know also a big shout out to my friend Matthew DeCastro who created the logos that we are using for the from the stands uh, cool picks show so thank you a big shout out to him so any design work you need done please feel free to reach out and we will connect you with him uh, thanks again guys and we will talk to you soon take care